A lot of people are wondering about monkeypox right now. What is it? Where did it come from? Can you get it? And what happens if you do? So let's get into it. We are in a monkeypox outbreak. The first case was in the UK back in May. And by July, we had over 16,000 cases in 74 different countries. And the World Health Organization declared a public health emergency. And those cases are still growing. We have over 1,000 cases in Canada and over 40,000 cases around the world. Now, you might think it's called monkeypox because it came from monkeys, but actually it's called that because it was discovered in monkeys all the way back in 1958. And in fact, the first human case was not until 1970 in a child in Africa. And as opposed to monkeys, it probably gets transmitted to humans from small mammals like squirrels or rats. As a result of that, there have been periodic infections in 11 different African countries over the past 50 years. So unlike the virus that causes COVID, this is not a new virus. And there have been cases outside of Africa before, but always with a link to Africa. There was an outbreak in the US in 2003, and that was related to exotic pets that had been imported from Africa. And there have been infections in other countries as well, but always in people who had traveled to Africa. So what's different this time is that there is local transmission happening in countries outside of Africa. Typically, people who get exposed to the virus will get sick within about a week. And at first, it feels like a flu. You get fevers and chills. You get fatigue, muscle aches, headaches, and then swollen lymph nodes. Then within a few days, you get a rash. Now, the typical rash from the monkeypox described in Africa starts on the face and spreads to other parts of the body. And you've seen pictures like this by now. It forms a large number of these painful bumps full of fluid all over the body. But what we're seeing with the current outbreak is often much more subtle, and it can look like any of these. In this outbreak, most people have had less than 10 of these bumps, and some have had just one, which is why it's often been hard to diagnose. And in fact, the rash is mostly happening in the genital areas, which brings us to how it's spread. It's possible to spread through droplets and maybe even aerosols like COVID, but it's not nearly as contagious as COVID. And in fact, the primary route of spread is direct skin-to-skin -skin contact, with those infected lesions full of virus, or even contact with infected clothing or bedding. In this outbreak, over 99% of those infected have been men, and over 95% are men who have sex with men. And it's been detected in body fluids like semen, so it could be spreading sexually, but mostly it's probably spreading through close, intimate contact. So although it can infect just about anyone, for now, it's almost exclusively spreading in that one community of people. And although mortality from this virus in Africa was described in the 3 to 6% range, the good news is that this outbreak seems to have originated from a milder strain, so chances of dying have been smaller than just one-tenth of 1%. 1 but the best news is that we already have a vaccine for this. And that's the peculiar and really lucky thing about monkeypox. And no, it's not because somebody planted the virus or planned this outbreak or because they rushed a vaccine. It's because of smallpox. Smallpox was this terrible virus that killed hundreds of millions of people around the world. But the reason you've never heard of it is that they developed a vaccine for it and it was so successful that the virus disappeared. In fact, it's the only human disease to ever be eradicated. And there hasn't been a case since the late 70s. But the reason we're talking about smallpox is that smallpox and monkeypox are both what are called orthopox viruses, which means that they're closely related so that people who receive the smallpox vaccine seem to also have good protection from monkeypox. Now, smallpox vaccination ended in the early 70s in North America, so if you're over 50, you're probably fine, but if you're under 50, you're not protected. But that's where there's another twist. Because it's so horrible, smallpox is also the kind of virus that could be used as a biological weapon. And because of that concern, the U.S. has continued to pour billions of dollars into smallpox research, despite that no one's actually had it for 45 years. And that research led to a new smallpox vaccine that was approved in 2013, then that vaccine was studied and shown to be effective in monkeypox, and that was approved for monkeypox in 2020. So we not only have a modern vaccine, but we also have a ready-made stockpile of this vaccine in case of a biological attack. So we started this outbreak in a much better position than we were in when we started with COVID-19. Along those same lines, there's also a treatment for smallpox called T-pox or Tecaviramat that is also now being used for monkeypox. The other good news is that there is some evidence of benefit in vaccinating people even after they've been exposed to the virus in that window of time before they get sick. So the strategy that's being used is called ring vaccination. You vaccinate everyone around each identified case, whether they've been exposed or have a high risk of future exposure. 
and then you vaccinate the close contacts of those close contacts in the first ring so that you basically form these rings of protection that prevent the virus from spreading outward. That being said, the biggest hurdle so far has been access to vaccines because just like when the COVID vaccines came out, there just aren't enough doses to go around right now. But unlike COVID, not everyone actually needs to be vaccinated because not everyone's at high risk. For now, it's people who have had a contact or those at high risk of having a contact, such as men who have sex with men. Those are the communities that we need to support right now. And the good news is that cases are slowing down and there is an end in sight. But the biggest risk we face is that the virus will find its way into animal populations outside of Africa. And if it establishes itself in new animal reservoirs, it can then periodically seed new outbreaks and essentially would become endemic in other parts of the world. So the bottom line is that we are in an international outbreak of monkeypox. But is it the next COVID? No, because it's not nearly as contagious. Nor is it nearly as serious, but it still can be very painful and it can be disfiguring. And currently, not everyone has a significant risk of catching it, but if you are in a high-risk group, get vaccinated, look out for those unusual rashes, and remember that spread mostly occurs through close contact. For more health and science info, subscribe to the feed.